So, here we are back again with episode number 2 of the Chelsea Career Mode series. Last episode was a big one for us because we made the transition from Bayer Leverkusen to Chelsea and we made the signing of Hakim Ziyech, we brought back Mason Mount and we did a lot more. Now in today's video, we're going to be continuing with all the transfer business, more signings. We need to sign a striker, a goalkeeper, a defender and a lot more. So a lot's going to go down in this episode. Now apart from all the transfer business, we kind of messed up in our first Premier League game of the season. It was against Leicester and we dropped points. So I'm hoping today we can pick up our first win of the series. So if you lot are enjoying the Chelsea career mode series, keep the support coming in. Your support is always appreciated. Drop a like at the video, subscribe if you're new around here if you guys can smash out 4,000 likes again that be just unbelievable and if you are new around here subscribe for more fifa 20 career mode content time for a press conference and if you guys want to see your questions being answered drop them down in the comment section below first one of the day trust christian pulisic he could actually be very good with his pace and it would be cool to see an american like him grow it's a good shout. Now, I was considering improving on that left flank because as good as Pulisic is, he's only 82 rated and we could certainly do better, especially considering the last left winger Chelsea had was Eden Hazard. So the thing is, I was looking to bring in another winger, but now that I think of it, he's only 21 and the room to grow for Pulisic is just absurdly insane. So you know what? I'm going to be trusting Christian Pulisic down the left flank for this season. We're not going to be signing another left winger. Let's give him the faith he deserves and see how he does besides that we've got way too many other positions to you know improve upon so for now we'll put the left wing position on the back seat Pulisic will get the job done hopefully next question do you think that you could win the title this season with an amazing team at your disposal if I'm being real with you guys in this first season with Chelsea I doubt winning the Premier League title is a realistic objective because let's be honest we know the way FIFA works this year, Liverpool and Man City are probably going to finish above 100 points and for us to achieve that, it's going to be a monumental task. I feel like a realistic goal will be to secure top 4 this season as well as of course winning the Europa League. I feel like that is going to be our objective for the season. We'll push for the Premier League title probably next season, that's the plan. Next question, not really a question though, more like some advice. When you negotiate, pay just over the initial player value example. If a player is worth 40 million, offer 45 million because the higher your initial offer is, the higher the computer counter offers. Now that is a good shout. You guys have complained for so long on the fact that I overpay for players. So you know what, we're going to change that. Today I'm going to be following this um, suggestion and we'll see if we can get players for cheaper this way. I know I overpay a lot for players. Hopefully I'll improve on how I work around my transfers. So that's going to be my aim for this episode, not overpaying on the players we try to sign. But with that press conference done, let's move on. The striker position is one that we need to sort out as soon as possible. Last episode, we discussed Timo Werner. And it seems like he is the man you guys want me to bring in. So let's make it happen. It's probably going to happen in real life. Let's get it done in this career mode as well. Good lord, Timo Werner is going to be expensive because he's valued at 72.5 million and his overall is 88. He is not going to be cheap at all. We're going to have to bring out the checkbook for this one. Let us see how much money we've got in the bank right now. I'm pretty sure it's a good amount. Yep, we can definitely afford Timo Werner. I don't want to be paying an absurd amount of money for him, but... Let's just adjust our budget and see how much money we've got left with. We should be able to sign Timo Werner right now. Let's make it happen. Hopefully we can get him for under 100 mil. That's my aim. Here we go. Negotiations with RB Leipzig for Werner. So I'm going to take your advice, guys, and I'm going to start off with a 75 million offer. Let's see if RB Leipzig are willing to entertain that. 111 is their counter. Maybe this is working. Let's now counter with maybe 85 million. 85 million for Timo Werner still seems like a lot of money, but you know what? If I can get him for 85, I feel like that is a big win. 91.6, okay, interesting. Um, let's counter with 88. Let's try and be as stingy as possible. Let's counter with 87. Why not? Let's go with 87 million and see if they're willing to accept. They won 88.1. This works. This works. We got him for 88.1, just a little over his valuation. Come on guys, I did well this time with my negotiations. We've got Timo Werner for a very good price. The job is not done yet. We've still got to get him to sign the contract with us. So crucial squad role, obviously that's what we're going to offer him. He's going to be our main man in the attack. We'll offer him a four-year contract length as well. And now here comes the interesting bit. Does he want a release clause? Nope, that is absolutely perfect with me. And now the wages. So he wants 125,000. We'll remove the gold bonus, submit offer. 
he should accept this. It's more than his wages at RB Leipzig at the moment. And there you go, it's done. Timo Werner to Chelsea is now complete. A top-class signing for the club. He's going to be up top there instead of Tammy Abraham now for us. And I think our attack is going to look 10 times better. This is honestly a fantastic signing. Someone who's 88 rated for the price. Wait, wait a minute. His valuation just went down if I'm not wrong. It was 72.5 million. It's gone down to 66.5. How have we just lost money on Werner? I don't get it. Regardless, his stats are still incredible. 94 acceleration, 92 sprint speed. Oh man, if we can get him in behind defenses through through walls from Ziyech and all, we'll be sorted for goals. Before we get into more transfer business, time to take a look at our season objectives for this season. Of course, six objectives selected by you guys in the comment section. And here they are. Captain America scored an assist 20 goals this season with Pulisic. It's a standard objective, but one that could be really tricky. Now, here's where things get interesting. Scottish Chavi have a 90% plus passing success rate with Billy Gilmore in five games. It's going to be an interesting objective to try and complete, but it's going to be fun to do so. We're going to have to give Billy Gilmore a fair few opportunities for that. The next Drogba, scout a striker from Ivory Coast with a 90 plus potential through the academy. This is also going to be a tricky objective. It's going to be luck based, but I'm hoping we get lucky and we get the next Drogba. Moving on, London is blue. Avoid losing against any London based club. Then we've got Moroccan Magic, scored assist 25 goals with Hakim Ziyech. I think we can get that done, we know how good he is. Mourinho Spirit, be the best defensive team in the Premier League. So, we've got to concede the least amount of goals. So, those are your objectives that we'll try and complete over the course of this season. Now, we're going to be running the four feet in a bit of a different way this season, which I'll be revealing in the next episode. So, stay tuned for that. Last episode, when we spoke about the possibility of bringing another defender, the amount of comments I got about Fikayo Tomori was just crazy so let's find him and sign him so let's see where Tomori is at the moment there he is Fikayo Tomori he's playing at Everton who at the club since 2020 can we actually even sign him oh we can we can actually sign him that's that's perfect we don't really know much about him which is just absurd he was a former Chelsea player EA we've got to have data on him anyways We'll just wing it and try and sign him ASAP. I'm not too sure what to go for in terms of value, so I'm just going to go for a 15 million transfer offer. We've got the money to splurge. Let's get it done. They want 21.6 million with a 15% sell-on clause. Let's counter with 18 million. I reckon that should work. Let's try and get him for as cheap as possible. Kind of funny that we're signing him because he should be here already with us, but it is what it is. 18.9 million, that works for me. 15% sell-on clause, but as I said... Not really keen on selling him anytime soon. So there you go. That is what we're paying for Fikayo Tomori. Definitely a bit confused on what to offer Tomori in terms of wages. So I'm just going to go for a 25,000. Let's go with 30. Let's go with 30,000 per week. And we'll go in with a 200,000 signing bonus. I may be overpaying, but I'm not sure what to offer. So we'll just go for it. He wants a lot more. So I'm glad he just didn't outright reject me. They will remove the bonus. 50,000 and a 470,000 signing bonus. That should work. A bit more cash, okay, that, that works with me. And with that, Tamori is back at Chelsea. Let's now take a break from all the transfer business and get right into some Premier League action. We're yet to win a single game in the Premier League, of course. We've only played one game, but let's go out there, put in a strong performance against West Brom and pick up all the three points. Here we go, Chelsea versus West Brom at the Stamford Bridge. I'm looking for a big performance from our team in this one. Timo Werner will be making his debut in this one. We've got Hudson Adoy starting as well. A strong Chelsea team. Let's go pick up the three points. Here we go, first game at the bridge for Chelsea. Very eager for this one, as you guys can see. Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech and all walking out. Werner donning the number nine jersey. Really excited to see how we can adapt to the Premier League and have things work out in his favor. We uh, we did face a Timo Werner a couple of times when we were by Leverkusen boss. Always caused us problems. Let's hope he can cause the opposing team problems now that we've got him as our player. Kante looks for Pulisic. We're trusting Pulisic. Let's hope he can repay that fade. The dribbling there was on point. I see Werner making a good run with his pace. We could go for the cutback here for Kovacic. On that right foot now. Could go for goal. Fair enough. That's a good challenge right there. We still get the ball back. Kovacic here. The dribbling is on point. Now it's Timo Werner. Good touch from him. Werner goes for goal. His first opportunity in a Chelsea shirt and he almost scores. Go good early signs. If you guys remember, in the last episode, we used a 4-3-3 formation. Unfortunately, that didn't really work out well for us. And now we're using a 4-4-1-1. I kind of feel like I'm in my comfort zone using this formation because I can attack with the wings really. 
in a much more efficient manner. Werner and Ziyech are in good positions. I'm, I'm liking the look of this. I think Ziyech is offside here. But yeah, the 4-4-1-1 formation might be the play for the players we've got here. Now it is Timo Werner. Holds up the play. This is one thing he's pretty good at. Now looks for Ziyech. An incisive pass into his spot. Now it's Kovacic with a big chance. Has to score. How has the keeper saved that? Wow. West Brom. The goalkeeper has just pulled off an outstanding save. Those are normally goals. 100% those are normally goals. Kovacic has been robbed there in a way. Fair enough. West Brom's keeper is just in a madness there. Somehow it's still nil-nil. That should have been 1-0 though. Back to Kovacic who's having a good game. Looks for Timo Werner on the turn. The fake shots work. Still Timo Werner. The dribbling is unreal. Goes for goal. Fair enough. The West Brom keeper has been impeccable so far. It's going to be difficult trying to beat him today. Here goes Kovacic. I need Werner to make the run, man. I really need Werner to make that run. He's finally made the run. Here goes Timo Werner. Big chance for him. He's managed to bamboozle the defender and that's Timo Werner. That is everything he offers. He got in behind in a good spot. He had the quick feet to get onto his stronger right foot and open up the space and then bang, a lovely finish into the back of the net. Timo Werner, our mega signing, is the first player to score a goal for us in this series. Our number 17, if I'm not wrong, that's Kovacic who picks up the assist. Who better than him? He's been impeccable all game long. Finds Timo Werner whose dribbling was on point. Finish was on point. We make it 1-0. Let's go. Controls it brilliantly. Looks inwards for Kovacic who's having a fabulous game. Still Kovacic here. Could wait for Ziyech. Waits for Ziyech who smashes this one. But Johnstone again with the save. If not for this West Brom keeper... I'm sure we'd be leading 3-0 or 4-0. That's how good we've been in this game. Problems here for us. Big problems. West Brom have gotten in behind. Nah, man. Nah. Not this way. I cannot believe it. We've had all the chances in this game and we end up conceding like this. One chance for West Brom and they've scored. Where was our defense? Honestly, where was our freaking defense here? This, this is not right. This is not right. We've still got time, but... What a stupid way to give away a goal. Looks now for Kovacic. Oh, the drag back has been brilliantly executed there and he still has the ball. I'm going to have to go backwards because there isn't really any option. Now it's Ziyech though on the turn. Go on. Oh, brilliantly done by Hakim Ziyech. No way. This goalkeeper is, 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 is a joke. How is he saving everything? That should have been 2-1 for us. The amount of saves he's made in this game, it is just absurd. What are we supposed to do against that man? I don't even know. Come on. And we're going to concede now. I can feel it. I can feel it. We're going to concede now. There's nothing we can do to stop this attack. There's literally nothing we can do. Oh, come on. Reese Javes has just saved us there. What's going on here? Oh, my God. Oh, I don't even know how to respond to this. I thought we were done for. I thought we were going to lose the game there, but we somehow survived that. Good Lord, this game is tense. I'm genuinely gutted. How have we dropped points in this game? We've had all the chances... And we've been the far better team. I mean, you know what? Let's take a look at the match stats if you guys don't believe me here. We've been far superior to West Brom. Look at the state of this game. Just look at this. Seven shots on target for us. I was effective in front of goal, that means. It's just that their keeper was just absurdly good. Look at this. Let's see. And he gets a seven point. And this is the formation. That, uh, oh, man. I'm, I'm just so furious right now. How have we dropped points in this game? So far, it's been a disaster, our start to Chelsea uh, in this career mode because first two games in the Premier League, both draws. Well, Morata is now back from his injury. That's good because we can then sell him as soon as possible. We weren't getting any offers for him because of the fact that he was injured. So now I'm expecting to see some big money offers come for him. An offer coming for Antonio Rudiger, 33.7 million. Not too keen on selling him. I feel like he's a quality centre-back in his prime as well. So yeah, rejecting the offer from Dortmund. So we've now got an offer coming for Ross Barkley. And this certainly has me thinking from Hoffenheim for 28.1 million. We've already got so many midfielders at the club. I reckon we sell Barkley. We've got Mason Mount is kind of similar to him. You know what? I'm going to sell Barkley. I think it's a good offer. We'll accept it. He's 26. He's not a youngster anymore. It just makes sense to get rid of him now. I feel like that's the right play. I'm sure you guys know that we've got only one keeper at the club and we certainly need to add another one in our ranks because having just one keeper throughout the season will be in a big problem if Kepa gets injured. And I'm thinking... Why not sign Lucas Rudecki? He was so good for us at Bayer Leverkusen. He'll push Kepa as well, compete with him for the starting spot, which is what we want. He's old as well. He'll give us some experience because Kepa is a young one. We, we don't need two youngsters fighting for the same spot. This just makes a lot of sense. It kind of feels like how when Barcelona had Ter Stegen, they went ahead and still signed Bravo. 
It could be similar and that's why let's bring back a former player, Lucas Ridecki. Let's get him in. 20 million is what I'm going to be starting off with. I think it's a fair amount. Let's see if Leverkusen are willing to accept that they want a lot more. 27.7. I still feel it's going to be worth it. I know he's, 20, uh, he's 30 years old, but still, goalkeepers go down very slowly in their rating. So 24 mil, they, they want to stick to that 27.7 mark. It's fine. We'll accept it. There you go. Let's get the Hideki deal sorted. Ooh, now this is where things get interesting. He wants an important squad role. We don't have a choice. We're going to have to give it to him, but he's probably not going to get that because I'm definitely going to be playing Kepa a lot more. We'll see, though. If he plays better, Kepa will probably be benched. We'll, we'll, we'll keep that on the table. Let's, of course, remove the bonus, submit offer. His wages are very reasonable. I'm not going to lie. And with that, there you go. Hideki. He was so good for us at Bayer Leverkusen and he joins us on our journey with Chelsea. So with the signing of Timo Werner and Fredeki, I'm kind of done with our transfer business for today's episode. Now next episode, we still need to bring in that right back. Now I anticipate having more cash with potentially Morata and Barkley going. So we'll keep that transfer for next suggestion. You guys can let me know who we should bring in for that right back role. Let me know in the comments section. But for now, let's focus on playing another Premier League game. We're actually 13th in the Premier League. This this makes my head hurt. We cannot be in this position. We need to pick up our first win of the season. It's against Bournemouth. We can do it. We can do it and we have to. Here we go. Chelsea versus Bournemouth as we take them on away for a moment. It's been a disaster of a start for us so far this season. Two games played, two draws. That's got to change here. This is I've got my team lined up. Timo Werner starting up top. Again, he scored in his, on his debut. Hopefully, he'll score again. I'm giving Hideki his debut as well. We've got Zuma starting. Yanezai getting an opportunity. We need the win here. We absolutely need the win here. I'm not liking the look of this at all. Bournemouth on the front foot in this game as well. But Reese James did really well. Yanezai looks back for him. He's going to push it forward. Here goes Reese James. Go on. This could lead to something. Reese James with a lot of pace. Bombing forward. Could go for an early cross. That didn't work. We messed up that attack completely. Rhys James, he's so good physically, but the only thing that's letting him down is the final product. He needs to add that to his locker. We know he's got a lot of pace, but no options whatsoever. Kovacic does offer some support. Now, Werner getting in behind. This could lead to something. Still, Timo Werner has to be a goal. It is a goal. Timo Werner with his second goal in a Chelsea shirt. We make it 1-0 against Bournemouth. There was literally no support for him. He had to go all the way backwards to, I think, Kovacic, who found the pass to him, picks up yet another assist. Timo Werner there with a lovely turn and then bang. Beautiful finesse shot to beat the keeper. 1-0 against Bournemouth, but the job has just begun now. We've got to keep this, um, what do you call it, advantage intact. We're not dropping points here. There we go with Pulisic. Oh, he's gotten past one. Here he goes, Christian Pulisic. Can he score his first goal of the season? Pulisic, no! How are we wasting chances like this? That's been the story of this uh, episode. Easy chances, we're bottling it. Pulisic again with a sitter. And he couldn't convert. That's how the first half comes to an end. It's 1-0, but really it should be more than that. Let's open the second half. We can push on and actually score more. Oh, and Golo Kante has literally gone past the entire defense. Still Kante. Nah, the final challenge came in. And Golo Kante, man. He, he is so quick. Yo, I'm not going to lie. Yanisai is a bit saucy in this game. I mean, he, he's not the quickest of players, but... He's doing business for me. I'm liking him on this right flank. Hopefully, he can get himself a goal soon. Finds Timo Werner with a nice pass. Ah, but Werner couldn't do much there. But Yanezai might be like an unsung hero for us in this series. You never know. Time to bring on some fresh legs. On comes Mason Mount for Pulisic. We'll also bring on Hudson Adoy to give us some extra pace up top. Let's also bring on Loftus Cheek for Kovacic, who's been impeccable in this game, but I feel like getting that physicality could be key. Bournemouth playing some good football here. Stanislas, good cross comes in. We've got to get it away. Oh my god, chaos at the back. Loftus Cheek put in a good foot there to save us, but again, we're giving the ball away so cheaply, and it's so frustrating. We're going to concede now, aren't we? I can feel it. I can feel it happening. Oh, thank god Radecki collected that. I cannot take another game of dropping points in stupid fashion. No, 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 no. That's not happening today. Hudson Adoy has been so, so good after being brought on. He's working a lot tirelessly down this right flank. He might be able to whip in a cross here. Or maybe a cutback for Hakim Ziyech. It's a brilliant pass. Still Ziyech tries to find Loftus Cheek. That's where I messed up. Should have just gone for goal. Full time against Bournemouth. And honestly, wasn't the best of performance from us. I mean, we really should have scored more. We weren't clinical enough. But ultimately, since we do secure the three points, I'll take it. I will take it right now. Well, there you go. A bit of good news immediately after that win. Ross Barkley has been sold and we get an additional 23 million to spend. So next episode... We've got about 50 million to spend on a right back and that's probably the final signing we're going to make 
in this team and i think we'll be sorted for until january of course yes yeah, so that's the plan with that win at least we're in the top half now but this is not where we want to be we've got to get on a good run of form and you know push towards top four next episode of course with all the transfer stuff comes a few games liverpool in the carabao cup away that's going to be interesting a chance to give all the youngsters a run out wolves as well in the prem you guys know i hate playing against them so that's going to be interesting we're going to wrap up the transfer deadline day as well we've actually made no progress at all with our season objectives in today's episode hopefully we can change that in the next one okay now it's time for the discussion for the player of the episode award i feel like the nominees are pretty clear for this one timo werner and kovacic kovacic controlled the midfield in both the games that we played he was so so good a couple of assists both assists were to timo werner and that's why he's also among the nominees it's between the two of them let me know in the comment section who you think deserves to win the player of the episode award and well that's that but for now that's that for today's episode of the chelsea career mode series really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode i'm loving the series so far let's keep it going drop a like in the video subscribe if you're new around here and i'll catch you guys next time